And welcome back. It's time for our second series of the evening. This is going to be, as I said, the battle of the Zhou's Guangzhou charge versus the Hangzhou Spark coming up. And, uh, you know, like we said at the, at the top of the show, this is another revenge match uh, between these two teams. These guys did square off just last week. Uh, Shanghai got their revenge. We'll see if this could be the case here. I have, a, have an inverse result this time around. Yeah, I'm excited to see how this all pans out. Um, Hangzhou last year had a really, really good year. Uh, and this year, the start has been a little bit rocky, I feel like. Actually, not that unlike last year. Um, even though we've actually gotten almost to the halfway point of the Overwatch League season, for these Chinese teams, they're all kind of round robbing each other in the Asia region. Mm. The season has kind of just started, right? So we'll see uh, how they, they kind of bounce back as we move forward. All right, well, let's go ahead and continue to move forward. As you said, we'll take a look at the Guangzhou starting roster and see what they have prepared for us here today. Yep, for the Guangzhou charge today, they're starting Eileen again with Nero. So a lot more sober, somber potential there. Rio and Krong on the tank line, and Neptuno and Shu bringing up the support. So, you know, not different from what we saw in their last match and not surprising given that Sombra is so potent right now. Uh, and I'm excited to see how this lineup clashes with the more defensive Hangzhou Spark. But I, I really like uh, Guangzhou's chances here, especially because it's an Eileen meta. He could play the Sombra, he could play the Doomfist when it's required. Um, it's a really solid meta with these the hero pool for this week for the Guangzhou charge. Well, on the other side, as far as the roster is concerned, we have one face that's popping up more and more for the Hangzhou Spark. We'll take a look at the starting six, but that guy that I'm talking about is going to be Sashin. Yeah, Sashin once again on the fl uh, flex tank roll over Rhea. So, you know, we saw him play it in their last match uh, yesterday, and then obviously last week at the very end he came in. So I, I think it's safe to say that he's kind of the main flex tank player over Rhea right now. And I think that's uh, in part due to how much Hangzhou is running Sigma right now. And I think Sashin has got a better track record than... Uh, Mr. Rhea, who's definitely had some questionable Gravitic Fluxes uh, in the past and plays a very flank-oriented style, which doesn't work well for Sigma because he doesn't have an escape like D.Va does. So I think playing a more passive style when you are running that hero is super important. But he's also playing D.Va, so it's hard yeah. to say why exactly he's in, but it's working out for the Spark. At least they feel like it's it's the better choice at the moment. Well, we'll see if they, you know, will end up subbing him out. Maybe this is just going to be a, a bit of a map play for him uh, at the start. You know, back in the day, thinking back to, you know, Apex, when Sachin had made his debut, he was always kind of just a, a set player would come in for one map at, right at the start, depending on what the control map was going to be. You know, if it was Lijiang Tower, he would come out, play Farah, and then immediately get subbed right back out. It, was very, it took a very long time for us to actually see him get regularly fielded uh, by any of the teams that he has been on historically. But we'll yeah. see if he gets a little bit more staying power. He's definitely been cropping up uh, a lot more as of late. So it, it's good to see that he is getting comfortable and, and working well with this team on, you know, a relatively new role for him being in that off-tank position. So we'll see if that's going to be enough for them to get that revenge. When these guys played against each other last week, it was a five-game series. So could go the distance. I mean... You never know. Maybe we'll get the inverse. Maybe this one is going to be the 3-0 set since we had the 3-1 in our first one. But uh, you can never really tell. I mean, it, it's impossible sure. to be a betting man when it comes down to these Chinese teams. The Chinese teams, you never know. Taking a look at our maps, though, for this series, we are starting off on Oasis. And we'll head into Volskaya, Rialto, and if needed, Eichenwald and Nepal. We won't get to the tiebreaker maps, uh, the later, later maps, until we get closer to that. But it's a pretty good uh, set of maps here. A lot of ver uh, variety we are seeing. With Oasis coming through. Yeah. So should be an interesting one. No Lijiang Tower for our friend Sasha, one of his old favorites. But, uh, you know, we, you mentioned that earlier that he was kind of a, a specific sub-in uh, player, or rather start player and then sub-out. More of a sub-out player than a sub-in player. Yeah. Uh, but he was a he was a DPS player, so if you're new to Overwatch League or didn't watch a lot of Korean Overwatch, uh, as Seth and I lived through uh, mm -hmm. most of that, you probably wouldn't know that he was a bar specialist later in the really DPS-oriented Sombra meta. He was a Sombra player, 
on the Foxes after, um, you know, the meta changed and we went into Contenders and when Apex went away. Very interesting still to see how much he's playing. And he's going to be starting again here on Oasis. And it, it begs the question, what what's going on with Rhea? Um, because Rhea is, in my opinion, one of the strongest D.Va players we had last year. But I think it's his Sigma is where I, you know, I have to ask questions. But I don't think we're going to see that much Sigma in this series. I really don't. I, yeah, I mean, time will tell. Anything is possible. So we'll see. Uh, just how things are going to evolve as we go deeper into this set and you know see who is going to be able to get a victory but as stated Oasis will be the map kicking us off here with city center to begin so we'll see if anybody gets to uh, play in this lovely traffic that we have going on at the moment everybody loves the traffic it's actually not you know we call it traffic but uh, it's it's flowing you know it's very consistent very smooth <laughs> it is something that you don't typically get uh, over in your neck of the woods right now being in Los Angeles no these days though well, I mean, maybe a little bit better yeah these days but that was see. pretty funny the teleport there <laughs> yeah just teleporting <laughs> forward would have been unfortunate if Gushway accidentally teleported back over towards the spawn yeah. <laughs> but uh, here we go high ground going to be taken first by the Hangzhou Spark waiting for charge to advance which they do they take the jump pad Drop back down, Bubbles coming through, just trying to build up that energy for both of these Zarya's, which so far, good start for Krong. He's gonna have a, a decent little lead there over Sasha. Building up now to just over 60 energy. Which way, swinging, trying to get that Shatter online as Nero tries to flank with the Reaper, but instantly gets tagged up so is forced to retreat. Both of our Moira's gonna have the coalescences online, whereas the Lucios will be lagging a little bit further behind. Shu gets hacked out, he can't answer. The coalescence coming out from Bebe. So instantly, Spark pulls the trigger. They manage to find the first kills here and get that first lockdown on the point. A very critical hack there. You, you pointed it out immediately. Without Shu's answering coalescence, they could not turn the fight. Krong, I believe, had higher energy, and that would have been a really nice way to turn that around is the counter later coalescence, having a Graviton Surge available. Now, Krong is a Zarya main. That's where he started his career. And he's obviously the stronger Zarya player in this matchup against a player who didn't play Flex Tank for until literally last week. So, you know, you'd expect him to win that matchup, but one hack can change everything. He's got it now, though, the Graviton. Also Krong have does. the Shatter online. Neptuno. Nearly with the sound barrier, likely going to be the go button. IDK a little bit further behind. Shatter comes down, but doesn't find much. The EMP out from Bazzi manages to find two, but instantly the turnaround is there. Eileen gets three. It will hose him down with that coalescence. And that will be the flip inevitably coming through. Krong just looking for the next target as he's at 100 energy. Will get rid of Bebe. And the flip will come in. Spark managed to build up the 53%, but now Charge, they're the ones in control. They have the grab, they have the barrier. Yeah, and they have choke point control as well. They're going to take the high ground instead, try to operate around that. They don't need to fight in the choke if they don't want to. They could delay this further by pulling the fight back and then taking the, the grab fight on the point and trying to trade ultimate. If you fight the choke, you don't get that old trade, and they need that right now. Graviton Surge, first coming out from Krong. Sound barriers there from IDK. A hack comes in on the... The first kills, Nero will be eliminated. Adora... Pinned by Rio, taken out, but they punish him for that charge. Sashin manages to burn him down. Now Krong going to be eliminated as well. Sashin hanging on by a thread, trying to survive. Seems like he will be able to do so. It even gets the, the final kill there onto Neptuno. Shu's got nowhere to go, so we'll just go ahead by a little bit of extra time. Get a little bit of extra percentage here built up on the point, but does die. And now it's back into the hands of the Hangzhou Spark. 46% for charge. Spark now at 60%. And every time they hit that jump pad, Wolf, it makes me think of Power Rangers when they're jumping across <laughs> the camera and forming the Megazord. There you go. Well, they took the fight outside of the choke to try to trade ults. They did trade ultimates. But they, they took that risky fight for it. They lose it. And now it's, as you say, the pendulum swings all the way back. They've got this EMP to engage. Yep, both tanks are gonna be caught by that, but it catches four as Eileen uses his own EMP. Two for two so far, as both Reaper and Reinhardt will be eliminated on either side. Spark, however, are the ones maintaining control for now. 
As the Reapers and the Ryans will try to get back over towards the point. 94% built up for the Spark, so an OT push gonna have to be necessary for the charge if they want a shot at winning this first round. Right click's coming through from Sasha, and he's got a slight lead on Kong, trying to get that grab online. Death Blossom comes through, Nero manages to find a kill, Adora gonna be taken down, Nero, however, will fall. Sasha finds that kill, the fire strike from Kushway, going to be good. Shatter comes in, Kronk keeps himself safe with a bubble, throws a bubble now out on Rio, who drops that hammer. Does manage to knock Sasha into the ground, but he stands back up and has Bazzi there to back him up for the damage. They get the kills, the OT bleeds away, and round one goes to the Hangzhou Spark, 146%. Really nice plays by Bazzi overall. Uh, the starting hack that obviously prevented Shu from getting the Coalescence is where they started to really lead their ult advantage. And that kind of carries forward. Um, you know, when I talk about that fight where Guangzhou decided to not fight in the choke, it sounds kind of counterintuitive, right? Why would you not just get the free win fight in the choke? If you can win the fight on the point and not in the choke, then you can trade ultimates. And if you win that risky fight, then you're going to trade ultimates. You can almost bait Hangzhou into thinking, okay, we can win this fight and just win the round, like straight up. And then you, you get to trade those ultimates. But then Hangzhou does have the potential to win that fight. If you if you ult in the choke, and Hangzhou doesn't use ults, they come right back out of spawn, and then you're down ultimates, right? So they took that risky fight, and it didn't pay off. And that's you know where that round really had its pivotal moment. See who gets the advantage first this time. Oh, just walking straight at Kushway is Rio, and uh, yeah, they're just gonna completely bully him out. Managed to find that, and spy checking gonna be good. Completely spotted out where Bazzi was going, but they cannot get the kill to further punish the Sombra. Yeah, Rio really almost hitting it there. That would have been pretty sick if he <laughs> landed that one. But I, I feel like Krong is playing the better as Arya. Uh, and that's that's why they get this first cap, or one of the reasons why they get this first cap. Well, now Sasha rejoining. About halfway behind Krong here at the moment, trying to build up that energy. Gets to 45, Coalescence is out, Rio, oh boy, drops the hammer, but instantly gets dropped on. So, does just kind of die after using that ultimate, and that is going to be a very bad look as Hangzhou Spark pull forward here onto the point. And try to take this one back. Charge getting just above 30% here at the moment. The EMP gonna be used by Eileen. Manages to catch Gushway. And maybe Charge can actually spin this one on its head. It was looking a bit terrible for them after the botched shatter. But they actually will be able to force the spark back towards the spawn. Because of the beginning of the fight was so, you know, okay, we got a single pick onto Rio. We're gonna take control of the point moment for a moment. Uh, actually, Sashin couldn't do that much in the fight and didn't get high energy, whereas Krong stayed back, had high energy, did way more in that extended fight. Sashin ends up being even with him in ult charge, but still very impressive follow-up EMP, knowing they had that damage there on Krong. Now Bazzi will have to answer with his own. Oh, this way. Shatter online. Coalescence is going to be dueling between the Moras. Just cross the point. Nero gonna get topped back up. Graviton Surge comes out from both of the Zarya's. The healing orb thrown in for the charge, and the kills are gonna be there as well, breaking down that front line, then finding the Reaper. A plethora of ultimates available for the Hangzhou Spark, but they have to be able to get to the point to use them. We're already at 90%. Guangzhou Charge looking for that 100 to zero. Yeah, they would, would love to take a real even fight here, but getting to the point is nigh impossible. Someone's going to have to rush in and touch it. 97%. They do manage to force that one out. Which way? Tagging up now, tiptoeing. EMP comes through. Sound barrier going to be good. Bessie finds the first kill as Eileen will fall. Hack is there on to Rio. He's going lower and lower. Nero taken down before he can use the Death Blossom, which might be a blessing in disguise. It seems like Hangzhou Spark, they will be able to get this flip. Not going to be hunted zeroed, but now Nero and Rio both have ultimates for a reapproach. Yeah, that was a, a fight that could have gone disastrously. I believe Bazzi was able to touch the point first. It's hard to say who actually got that touch, but I believe it was Bazzi. He barely got it in, and then they set up for a really nice fight behind him. We have Coalescence here to trade with Shu when he comes in for the approach. There's no EMP for Eileen. And Hangzhou has a real fighting chance of bringing this back. Rio. Shatter available. They can layer that in with the Death Blossom. Could be huge. Nero just gets in right behind the shield and manages to get rid of IDK. 
A big portion of the healing now going to be gone. But also somebody who can buy time for the Hangzhou Spark quite well. Gujue is getting pushed on. The Shatter gets dropped in. OT ticking down now. You see the Translocator coming through, but Massey instantly greeted with death, as is IDK. Nero is cleaning up house, and we will have a third round garden to decide Oasis and see who can start off the series with a map win. Yeah, really close so far, as you'd expect from these Game 5 teams right now. <laughs> uh, but I gotta say, the synergy for Guangzhou is really good in terms of how they're coordinating fights that look almost lost. Most impressive moment was that delayed EMP on their first cap to, to swing that back after Rio had the fail shatter, right? Where he overstepped the boundary, got picked off, and then they turned that around. It's moments like those that are incredible when you have a team that has a Chinese player, a, an American player, and then four Koreans to have that sort of coordination with three languages on the squad, something we were impressed by last year. And we continue to be impressed by as we watch this happen right now. Yeah. I, I know Nero, especially, you know, having been with the roster since last year, it's put in a lot of work in learning Korean, especially. Shots coming through, though, as both teams just clash on the high ground. Nero tagged up a bit. IDK retreating, just staying with the squad, riding up on the walls, trying to get some shots through to build up for that sound barrier. Does he go for a push and try and get the boop off? Wraps around the side, manages to find one. Oh, Krong, he tried to land on the, the lower ledge, but just could not do so. And Baby Bay, Baby Bay, Baby Bay, <laughs> wrong team, wrong player, manages to get the kill there onto Rio. Coalescence is out from Shu, but not sure if he is going to be able to escape. Fire Strike goes forward. Neptuno will barely be able to make it out, but Spark. Do lock down that point first and foremost. Very nice push forward there from IDK. Yeah, the knockoff there on the Krong is, I mean, it basically just ends the fight. Guangzhou <laughs> delay. They try to build up as much ult charge as they can, but there's not much you could do without your Zarya there. You just lose all your damage, all your real I mean, support. Look, they can't really push out this way. IDK nope. is just waiting. Constantly hovering from above. Goes in for the drop down, but the EMP is perfect. Catches all six members of the Hangzhou Spark, and Krong is just beaming people down. Gets two. Sashin going to fall there on the back end. Now Adora. And oh, man, IDK, he was feeling it. He was vibing for it. Wanted that big knockoff, but instead, they just get absolutely crushed by Eileen. IDK just loves his boops, man. He's so great at setting up. Uh, picks that lead to team fight wins. He's one of the leaders in terms of environmental kills, but the whole team was playing around that, and as a result, they all got caught by the EMP at once. He didn't have a sound barrier regardless, but this could have been so much better for the Spark, the advantage they had. Well, we just saw a six-man EMP from Eileen Bazzi. Can you deliver? He's got three prime candidates right here onto the high ground, nearly gets detected. Looking for a hack, IDK is hacked for the moment, and Nero goes in with a death blossom, picks up three! Gushway on the back end, and oh man, what a statement from Nero. Completely crushes them. Didn't even need an EMP to set it up. I mean, that was a How does that happen? moment for Bazzi. Like, that was a moment for Bazzi where, you know, he looks like an idealist. He's trying to set up the perfect EMP where he hits Neptune, but also the rest of the team and swings the fight. Take a look at this replay here from Nero as he just comes into the back yeah, there thanks. as the grab sets it up. But I feel like Bazzi could have EMP'd way before that even happened, and we would have had a much better uh, Hangzhou spike fight there. Well, sound barrier out, grab comes through, manages to catch two against the wall. Eileen and Shu both will fall. Rio taken down there. Krong does manage to find one, but seems like Hangzhou spark very much hungry to get this point back under their control. Nero steps forward, goes into the Wraith form, just buying a little bit of extra percentage for them, but the flip will come through right at 85. Nope. Look at this, Never though. Mind. I mean, they're buying so much time. Still holding off. Now Shu here onto the point. Healing Orb, helping buy some more time. Yeah, they're looking to force out that overtime. They just Heck want the one out. EMP still buying fight. Time here. Yeah, they go. want the one EMP fight. They get it almost to 99, and this was inevitable, too. Guangzhou come in and steal the point back with the Graviton Surge and hold the rest of their ultimates, but Guangzhou with a massive edge here. Hangzhou has their own EMP, but Neptuno's Sound Barrier is the card that that Guangzhou holds right now. 
the Spark just won't be able to deal with unless they can catch him or hack him. Eileen in prime position as well right. to I'm make this happen. He sees like this is deja vu, but oh man, Eileen tries to go for it. Doesn't get anything. Bazzy shuts him down with an EMP of his own. Now Nero eliminated by Adora. 80% about to come through for the Spark. They've got the Blossom, they've got the Coalescence, but the rest of the ultimate's quite far away, but they're still pretty damn close in ults compared to the charge. Shatter, Coalescence online, Grav 25% away from for Krong. Can the charge Scotty. make this happen? He's got the ability to make it happen for sure if he can get some good energy. Gosh, and popping the bubble, trying to stay alive, but we'll just go ahead and be eliminated. A very strong start for the Guangzhou charge. Eileen nearly eliminated, it has to retreat with the translocator, trying to find a health pack, but Lu Shui manages to get him with a fire strike. Takes him down. Lu Shui not willing to push forward, but now gets the fire strike. Now he wants to go in. Grab comes in. Nero is right below them. The Death Blossom the death comes blossom. through. He manages to get two. Can he get more? No Lake way. Seal keeps him alive for a little bit longer. Managed to get the, to get the kill there on the Gushway at the end. But Bazzi is now cleaning up. Gets rid of two. And that will be enough. Hangzhou Spark able to take it. But man, what a close start to the series. Charge nearly able to bring that one back into their favor to close out Oasis. But no, the Spark able to net that one for themselves. So now start up 1-0. Nero and Neptuno, that duo almost stole the game away. Uh, Nero coming in with a massive, massive blossom, and then it survives so long. Neptuno is on the point at like 20-ish health, and he's by in time too. And you could see the rush back. Eileen is trying to translocate forward as fast as he can to get back onto the point. Almost, but not good enough. This is another one of those series between these two that could go to five, and they're going to play against each other a lot in this division. So yeah. we might be seeing a lot of these close games, but I'm loving it so far. Yeah, I mean, great start to the series. So uh, hopefully it just continues to deliver on this level and uh, you know, be on an knife's edge throughout the entire thing. I'm very much uh, on board for that. So we'll see if that's what we get when we come back from the break, guys. Map number two coming your way in just a bit. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Rank up with America's first and only nationwide 5G network. And by State Farm. For auto, home, or renter's insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Cheese It Groups. Deep flavor, deep crunch. It's a mind crunch. And welcome back. We are just one map into our final series of the evening. Uh, extremely close is the best way to describe it, I feel. Uh, but barely edging out a victory or the Hangzhou spark there on Oasis. But this one seems to be on a knife's edge, and hopefully that's going to continue through for the rest of this set. The last time these guys squared off last week, like you mentioned just before the break, Wolf, it was a five-map series. And it seems like we might be on a similar path now. I mean, very, very back and forth. That's how control goes a lot of the time with two close teams. But as we head into our other map types, I think that's where we're going to really find out Excuse me, just how close this is going to get. So I'm hoping for another game five, maybe even game seven. Yeah. If we can uh, if we can push all, all the way there, keep everybody up all night. Now, some people, you know, waking up early in the morning to watch this, depending on where you are in the world. We're all connected by the Internet. Yep. As it turns out. But uh, all right. As the audio cue comes in, Volskaya Industries will be our second map again. We had that in the first series, and we had some 
you know, very interesting plays. Jinwu, of course, on the Farah was absolutely huge. Nero is another excellent Farah player, so perhaps uh, he'll be piloting that pick here in this map. We'll find out. We'll find out. Let's see what these guys want to piece together for us. I feel like, uh, you know, when we were talking about Sasha at the beginning of the series, we were so focused on D.Va and Sigma um, and talking about, obviously, like his, his previous history um, and stuff like that. But we didn't really talk about his Zarya that much. And even though Krong has outclassed him, I think, in a lot of ways in terms of uh, ult build charge, his energy levels, he's keeping up decently well. And you would expect that a lot of the time when you have that mismatch, especially on control, for example, that things would go really badly for him and really badly for Spark, but not so much. And that's impressive. Remember, this is a player who's really playing his first few games of Zarya professionally right now. And to keep pace with Krong is really no simple feat. Yeah, very big boon for the Spark. You can see Eileen just up top poking out, trying to farm as best as he can. Bazzy nearly getting out traded. But has that healing coming through. Eileen has to retreat, of course, to get topped back up. Rio pushing forward aggressively. Getting that bubble out, gets a couple swings in, does build up the 36%. It's gonna be a wrap around the right-hand side here for the Hangzhou Spark, but Eileen in the meantime found the hack on the Bazzy and does manage to take him down and take a lead in that EMP charge game, 50% for him. Pushing up now. Up top and behind the Hangzhou Spark. They just route themselves down onto the point, but they cannot stick around to try and get that first tick. Get decently close. Poke damage continues to fly. Yep, they're going to get pushed back here. Fire oh, strike. As I say that. Gets rid of Eileen. That's absolutely huge. No way to bring him back into the fight. Coalescence is going to be coming through from both of our Moiras. The kite back coming in from Gushui. His backpedaling does manage to stay safe, but the same cannot be said for Krong. He does get finished off by Sasha, who's got a massive amount of energy built up here at the moment, and still has that projected bubble that he can use. Also sit forward there onto Gushui. The point will just start getting capped. Guangzhou charge. They have to hightail it. They have to get the hell out of there. Yep. Rio just barely escapes with his life. He and Gushui tied in ult charge right now. Sasha doing way more damage, though, as the attacking Zarya. A grab is set here. Neptuno should have the sound barrier before that happens, but he's going to have to deal with both the EMP and the grab. And as the defenders, you have to kind of be a little bit grouped up. So this is a really tough spot for the Guangzhou Charge. This could be a double cap here when the approach comes through, and they haven't sp spotted Bazzi yet. So this is actually really terrifying for Guangzhou as they desperately try to spy check him. Main thing is going to be Neptuno with this sound barrier. See oh how well he can play around things like the EMP, but actually Trigger pulled first by Eileen and manages to catch out four, and Gushui just evaporates instantly. There will be the point for I actually really now. like how Hangzhou handled that, though, because the one thing that Guangzhou had to prevent the EMP into grab was their own EMP, where they could hit then onto Sasha to prevent the follow up. Bazzi doesn't EMP, they kind of fake the push, and now Guangzhou's had to use one of their big tools here. They still don't have their grab, they're about to have it, but they had to use that EMP, so. Ult advantage to Hangzhou for the second push, and this one's the real one. This one's Cap. the lethal one. I mean, Big Six getting ready to come in for the Spark Coalescence to start. Matched by Shu. Sound barrier going to be held by Neptuno, likely waiting for Bazzi, who they just now spot out. He's going to be hacked, however, however. Graviton Surge is coming through from both of these teams. Shatter going to be dropped in. Manages to stun up Nero, but it will get the kill as Gushui charges forward. One tick going to be grabbed. The door for the Death Blossom takes down two. And like you said, the fatal one here, they push forward. They nearly get the cap, 96.5%. Neptuno gonna be dead on arrival. Krong taken down by the Fire Strike. And 353 is an extremely strong take on Point B of Volskaya. The Spark just charging straight through there. No pun intended. Yeah, Guangzhou, I mean, they did what they could. They had that really nice setup to the, defend the first push on B. But the Spark was one step ahead knowing how they would fight it. They waited, they had the follow-up push. Krong avoided getting EMP'd, so he still had his grav uh, to counter there. And in that moment, it looked like we were back in GOATS. I'm sure somebody at home was like, No, they can't have that! We had 2-2-2! Two, two, two. What is this? Brigitte's bad! Uh, it looks like GOATS there. But Every, everything's <laughs> GOATS, remember? Yeah, every, I mean, for some teams, for Hangzhou, sometimes it really feels like it. But yeah, I mean, obviously the War of Attrition goes to Hangzhou in that moment. Despite everything. So, double cap here. Four minutes of time bank. But as we know, with 
uh, 2 CP or assault, as it's more technically and correctly called. Uh, we do see sometimes double caps from both teams, and with how evenly matched these two are, if Guangzhou also get a really nice A push and have that same ult lead, they're definitely not out of this yet. Right, you know, in a lot of ranked games, for example, you play a ranked game like this, you know there's one guy on your team, if you're on the Guangzhou side, who's like, ah, oh, I'm out, I quit, I'm playing Torb, whatever. They have four minutes, like, we can't win. But that's not true. <laughs> they definitely can come back from this if they have a similar pace for their own attack. For sure, we'll see if they're able to obtain that. TP forward up onto the high ground. And Nero does swap here. For a second, I thought he was going to be sticking through with the Symmetra. Would have been a, a very odd move. It's back to the mirror matchup. Unsurprising at this point. I'm out of here. Yep, they're just going to have to wrap around to this high ground and try to jump down onto the point. Hongzhou will have to match. Really nice orb there coming through from Bebe, actually, right into the uh, doorway that when they all hit, surging up an ult charge. Ooh, good amount of damage there onto IDK, but a nice bubble from Sasha keeps him safe. Pushing down now onto the low ground. Well, the Guangzhou charge. Rio leading the team up towards the enemy's corner. Barrier, however, dangerously low. Just shy of 400 HP remaining on that one. They push forward and they do manage to find Gushui. Bazzi hacked out as well. So seems like Guangzhou Charge should be able to get just as strong of a first push coming through here onto point A. They're still playing this one out rather slowly though, which does give enough time for Gushui to get ready and rejoin in with the rest of the squad. Krong does manage to burn down Sashin quite low, doesn't finish him off, but Eileen gets the better of Bazzi and the cap will be there. So five and a half minutes for the charge. Yeah, and even with the changes to respawns on uh, assault maps, like if Sajin had tried to challenge there, he would have, first of all, lost his high energy that he has. Even though he has a grab, he wouldn't have been able to turn it on his own. So he steps back, and they could have been double capped even faster. Eileen EMP. pushing forward, EMP comes through. Bazzi responds, and he finds a bigger EMP. Catches five members on the side of the Guangzhou charge, but the kills are still going to be there. Four charge, IDK and Gushui both going to be picked off. Sashin using that Graviton Surge, now going to be locked up in Kronks. Does get taken down as he's completely isolated. Can they finish it out here? 99.8% the sound barrier comes through from Neptuno. Adora tries to use the Death Blossom, but gets hacked out of it immediately and finished off by Krong. Nero hacked, has a Death Blossom of his own, but doesn't need to use it. They will be able to finish that one off. 257 to two minutes. Yep, our new... Uh New Climb system. Bang coming into effect. Yep, new system. This might be one of the first times we see this, actually. Don't quote me on that, but... I think we had it earlier today, if not yesterday's Asia Games. Yeah, I think there was one yesterday. There was definitely night, a moment, because I, I was... I think it was... I think it might have been last night, uh, because I was still a little bit groggy, because, you know, it was early in the morning. But, uh... And then I saw that the time bank... Times changed, and I was like, wait, what? Oh, wait, never mind. That's the... That's, that's what it happened. Yeah, that's the thing about all the Overwatch and all the time zones. It's like we're, all the casts have to watch all of it. And when you're casting this, the second day like this at Asia time, you don't have time to watch VODs. you got to watch it all live. And there's a lot of Overwatch, so sometimes it does all bleed together. But regardless, yeah, this is the new um, the new time bank and effect where uh, the weaker team gets pulled down to two in terms of both teams having a high time bank to prevent those uh, 4 CP, 6 CP uh, chat spam moments. But... Uh, you know, as I mentioned right before we even went into the Guangzhou attack, it's like, well, it's a four-minute time bank, but, you know, anything can happen, especially with comps like these, these goats ask these, you know, remember the somber goats? This is pretty similar to that, right? And uh, as a result, sometimes these crazy snowballs do happen, despite all the changes we've had in the game to Assault. Uh, you know, they can't prevent all the snowballs. Yeah. But still, much less oppressive as far as the time banks are concerned. Sure. So, starting with two minutes. Spark pushing forward here to the choke. Not willing to try anything risky, which is unsurprising here. Now is not the time to try to go for the random Farah attack. Bubbles coming through. Sashin building up quite nicely, but Krong taking the lead in the Graviton Surge charge. And this is a very dangerous spot to be in. The pin comes through Gushui. Just managed to find Rio, but there's just too many members of the charge there. They cut him down instantly as the charge gets completed. 
And that is just going to be a couple extra cleanup kills on the back end. Now down to a minute. Hey, and our first successful defense. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's it's really nice here for Guangzhou though. They're gonna have the EMP for the choke, and because of the fast build on that, IDK is obviously not even halfway to the countering sound barrier he's gonna need. This is a really awful place to be if you're a Spark fan. Yeah, now just have to try and rely on you know Bebe dodging out and hoping that the coalescence is going to be enough to keep them alive through the EMP. And the spy check where possible. Energy still. Rather low for Sashin. They're actually buying so much time by just playing on this high ground and being defensive. Abazi's uh, long range trying to get the last part of his 30. IDK's 70%. Uh, I mean, this is doable. Well, EMP comes through, does manage to catch out two. Kron gonna be hacked, but he is still gonna be quite healthy. EMP is there from Shu. They find IDK. 13 seconds remaining. They cannot afford to try and wait around for the Lucio. Somebody's gonna have to get their butt on that point. As the EMP now online, but down to half HP would be rather dangerous for him to try and go in. Jumps up over the top, the EMP comes through, manages to catch two. Sound barrier on the back end, not early enough to save Rio, but it's good enough to allow Nero to push forward and start ripping people apart. Bubble comes out from Krong to keep him alive, as Krong himself is at 100 energy. Pushes around the side, manages to get the kill there onto IDK. The cleanup comes through, no percentage gain for the Hangzhou Spark here on point A. Guangzhou charge with nearly three minutes in the time bank, just need that single tick to tie up this series one to one. Yeah, it was a really cool idea from Hangzhou to try to kind of hang back, get those ults they needed. They knew they were behind. They knew they were gonna lose a fight. They only had one fight, right? So if they just straight up dive to the point, try to take a straight up fight, they lose it. They play passive to try to force the Guangzhou to come to them then they have a real chance to catch up on those ult charges uh, and take the second ones, maybe, if they could even try to force something off the high ground. But Guangzhou realized what was happening, were aggressive themselves, had that uh, ult advantage, and everything fell apart. So it was winnable, it was doable, for sure, for Hangzhou with what they were doing, if Guangzhou didn't respond correctly or if they got a really nice pick. But it didn't happen that way. and Put up a pretty, uh, you know, solid fight, but at the end of the day, with comps like this, you just don't even get a tick like that. Um, so, Guangzhou now has a great chance to, uh, if they can have that successful fight that both teams had on a in the previous, the, you know, the first rounds before overtime, they have a really good chance to tie us up in this series and head towards that game five that we were, uh, were prophesizing. <laughs> no composition changes, you know. A lot of teams, especially Chinese teams, would love to just swap up and go far here or something like that, you know, and just really trip up the opponent, but when you have the superior time bank, a lot of teams just go, well, if we get the one really cool grab fight, we just win, so let's go for that. I like that from Krong, just trying to go for a Hail Mary hook, try and find Bazzi, but uh, it would have been impressive, but it doesn't happen. It was extremely unlikely. Eileen <laughs> trying to get the hack. Nice. IDK's right there dueling with him, but still takes quite a bit of damage, but does have the Mega, so manages to stay alive. Instant collapse from him. IDK has always been such a, a nutty Lucio player. He's just aware of where Sombra's going to look for that mega hack. Counters it, so they get both. Yep, incredibly smart from him. But, again, repeat approach. We've seen both teams do this exact movement. Get up onto that high ground, now drop down. Rio getting right up into Gushui's face as the Zarya bubbles will come through from either side. Joe Spark faring a little bit better as far as the tank ults are concerned here at the moment, but that Fire Strike will certainly turn things around. Rio just trying to swing. They nearly have that tick, and Hangzhou Spark, they have to stay entrenched on the point, but they just don't do it. Yeah, they're just so they're just so forced back into that room that it's hard to actually come forward without losing everybody, so nobody touches. You can see IDK was kind of swinging around there to, to get on and tag it, but he was a little bit too slow. Yeah. It's not a C9 because they were losing the fight and they were in a bad position. If they did touch, especially the faster they touched, the the more likely they were to lose that fight incredibly badly. So, yeah. I mean, it was a lose-lose situation. Um, they did, Yeah, they didn't touch and the game ends without anybody dying. So I know somebody at home was like, but like they were all alive and they touched the point, but I mean they yeah. couldn't really touch the point realistically there. I'm sure I know we have a delay going, but I'm sure that the YouTube chat is just going to be filled with C9s in a moment. So 
Uh, yeah, there was nothing realistically that Hangzhou could do. They just had they ended up backpedaling way too much and couldn't re-advance onto the point in time without just effectively dying, as you said. So a bit of a catch-22 for them. But the series is now tied up one to one. So maybe that game five prophecy is going to be fulfilled today. We'll find out in a bit. But coming up next, we're gonna have our halftime. So stay tuned, guys. We'll be right back with that. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. And welcome back. It's time for our game break presented by Pringles Wavy. So, Kilios and Wolf back again uh, all by ourselves here <laughs> without the desk to back us up. But it's fine because we've got the we've got the insight. We've got the, the hard-hitting facts. And the first one is that, yeah, that wasn't a C9, guys. Yeah. Um, that's not a C9. That's so a C9. Like, let's 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 just this is, is this our crunch, crunch time? time? Is no. explaining? Well, you know what? Actually, this is my crunch time break. All right. By Pringles Wavy. C9, by the way, comes from a team called Cloud9, mm -hmm. uh, which comes from an era where they played in Apex, um, which I'm sure you've all heard of. If you haven't, do your research. But you've never watched our cast before then. <laughs> there was a lot of winning a team fight, like completely winning a team fight, and then either stepping off of the control point or stepping off of the cart, the payload, after a one team fight. I'm talking like there's one or two dudes left on the other side, complete wipe, and they just don't go and tag the point. So as a result, people started spamming C9, Monty Adore were casting at the time, and uh, called them out on it several times. So that's where the meme started. That's where the C9 is. And what happened in that last moment on Volskaya was not a C9. It was a lost team fight for Hangzhou Spark, despite the members not all being dead. It was very likely an unwinnable team fight. And yes, ideally, IDK was trying to tag on the point, but they wanted to tag at the last second where they had the best opportunity to win that team fight in such a way that would give them... Uh, like, if, if they wait, they get to fight in that choke in the in the room that's there. I don't know if there's an actual call-out for that room. Garage. The room that's there, not the bunker. The garage. If they take the fight in the garage, they have a better chance of taking an even fight, then touching the point, then delaying. If they just rush to the point immediately, all of them, then they just get crushed and lose it no matter what. So that's why they delayed. That's why that happened. And that's why it's not a C9. Yeah, like I said, catch-22. There was nothing realistically that they could do to try to get back onto the point. So effectively a loss for them and therefore not a cloud nine. I, th I felt like you needed the change into your Professor Wolf outfit and have your 
you know, your little pointing stick or whatever. <laughs> work work in the background and having some kind of display, but unfortunately, I, I don't think you have that uh, that outfit with you. But uh, no, there you not have the time. it. That's our crunch time. That's our game break here, presented by Pringles Wavy. We'll be back with the rest of the series. It's tied up one to one at the moment. I'm feeling the game five. I hope you guys are as well. Actually, screw. Let's just let's, let's go the distance. If we can go further than five, let's just let's just do that today. Because why the hell not? Why not? But we'll be back with uh, map number three in just a bit. So we'll see you then. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Pringles Wavy. Big crunch, big flavor. The Overwatch League is brought to you by HyperX. Unleash your style, unleash your fury. With HyperX Fury Memory. And by Coca-Cola, the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. And welcome back. We just had our very informative game break. And now it's time to continue on with the series. Tied up one to one at the moment. Guangzhou Charge able to bring it back on Volskaya to tie us up and now one team will look to advance and get that nice lead and force out a match point. Trying to get that match point, that's what everybody is looking for uh, heading into this next map. Very back and forth, very exciting so far. I mean, even that last map we just watched was very much down to the wire. Both teams completing yeah. A and B, getting those double caps. Heading into A, I mean, Hangzhou was on the cusp of getting that defense there. Did end up falling apart. Obviously, bigger time bank going over to Guangzhou. But, I mean, this is anyone's series to take. We could go all the way. I know we keep joking about it. It's the prophecy. We're going to game five. But these two teams are just so close to each other in skill. They play similar compositions that, you know, it feels like that's something that could definitely happen. Yeah, it just seems increasingly likely as time goes on. So these guys are very much in about They're going back and forth here. And I'm all about it. It's uh, It's been a very entertaining match so far. And I think that it's just going to continue to deliver as we delve a little bit deeper. So, we'll see who can net themselves that very sought after lead here and be one step closer to finishing things out. Getting, We're getting there, we're getting closer. Taking a look at Rialto now, a really good map for Zarya. So, you know, with no substitutions here, looks like that's what we're gonna see more of. Reaper, Sombra, no Torbjorn. And this is, you know, 
Torbjorn doesn't have the ability to kind of build space like we've seen um, on other maps. So I, you know, this is not a map where you could really see it anyways. But neither of these teams really favoring that at the moment. Eileen teases the Farah here, but they're on the attacking team, and I, you know, I think he's just having fun. I don't think that is actually going to happen. Nope. There's the swap. Mirror matchup. Yeah. Basically, Sombra Goats in 2020. And, you know, I like to cast this kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, you and I were definitely two of the, <laughs> the few people that uh, actually really, really enjoyed the GOATS meta when that was a thing. Granted, did it last too long? Yeah, but it was still fun to watch and fun to cast. But here we go. Push it forward. Oh, Eileen just co mid-air collision with Bazzy. Will we force gotta be, back? Got to be careful about those. Yeah, poking around the backside, Eileen trying to catch up as far as alt charge, but Bazzy is very much in control of that for the moment. Cart rolled up to that first dangerous corner. High ground is snatched up by charge. It's just a matter of when do they want to drop down. Hack goes in onto IDK. Haven't found a kill onto him yet, though. Sashin building up quite a bit of energy. 75 here for him on the Zarya. But neck and neck, as far as the ult charge is concerned, against Krong. Cart has been pushed forward, though. And you can see the spark now in behind the cart. Coalescence out from shoot, does manage to find Bazzi, takes him off the high ground. That's going to allow for Eileen to surge forward towards that EMP. Healing Orb going out. An exchange on the Reapers for now as Sashin tries to stay alive, but does not have that self bubble to buy a little bit of extra time, so will fall in the end. Now, really? Krong has grabbed just in case there's that last second contest here at point A. Yeah, really nice hack onto IDK as well to kind of slow the retreat there. Gets a second hack onto IDK. Eileen's hack priority really solid throughout the later moments of that fight. And this is actually really huge that they could, they are able to take this uh, while also stopping that retreat. It means they don't have to take that choke point fight where eventually, obviously, Sasha will have his grab. He's going to have it very shortly. And he might have been able to grab in that archway or on the bridge. Two really strong points for defender grabs, just like back in the GOATS era or Rialto. EMP going to be coming through, manages to catch out three. Eileen trying to use his, but just stacked on top of each other, so they end up losing out on that. Grab's going to be coming through. Sashin actually kills himself off with a right click, but it looks like it does not matter. The Spark still quite handedly winning the fight. Frog trying to retreat, but will not be allowed to do so, so cannot hold on to that extra energy for the next fight. So now it has to start from scratch. And Spark have control of the cart and the bridge. Bazzi gets that uh, exit kill onto Eileen as well. She's going to really slow this down. He's got a really nice flank angle. And IDK is not setting up for the boops, actually, like he normally does. You can see the camera switches to him as soon as I mention that. But uh, as the longer fight goes on, he definitely has opportunity. Coalescence well, here from Shu. IDK dips around the corner, drops the beat, There's goes one. for the boop, almost sends Shu into the water. Doesn't quite find it, but it still looks like Spark might be able to win out on this fight. Several members on the side of the charge falling dangerously low, but now Neptuno going to be dropping the beat as well. Gets that shielding out onto his squad. Ryo going to be hacked, however. Tries to stay alive. Seems like he pulls back around the corner well enough. Gets that shield raised back up, but instantly EMP out from Bazzi. And Sashin has the kill. So Cart going to be halted yet again. Still three safe. minutes plus remaining, though, for a charge. So this is not a hopeless push by any means, oh, but no. they're yeah, not getting too not. much progress. You feel safe if you're charged in the EMP fight to, to back around the corner and wait. But Bazzi actually just barely clips past the corner of the translocator and hits that right around the edge. And then it's a one fight. Obviously, the first Sombra to EMP usually has the advantage when neither team has sound barrier, which was the case. But Eileen now holds his. See if he can get a similar amount of value here. He's actually just backdooring the cart at the moment. Oh, but now he's going to be hacked out. Can they get the kill onto him, though? Takes a bit of damage, but they cannot finish him off. But still nicely done by Bazzi, instantly responding with that hack. Yeah. Forcing Hangzhou to jump down, but they don't get any distance with this. Grab going to be lobbed in by Sashin. Shatter trying to get dropped through, but Gushuai just going to be met by shield. So it doesn't get much and now has to pull back, but his shield falling low. EMP comes through, catches multiple members on the side of the spark. And that should just about do it here 
for point B. They do have enough time, perhaps, to try and recontest one last time, but with these late deaths, I think it would be ill-advised, so likely yeah. just going to have to be waiting at the top of the ramp here. Gushway's shatter there, like, that's when, like, every Reinhardt main watching this, like, they had the biggest smile. They were like, oh, it's going to be big! And then two sh a bubble and a shield pop. Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> Yeah, Almost the, value there. That was the inverse Gamsu from what we saw earlier on Eichenwald for the fuel. Yep, Grav's out. Ooh, Very early. Stunned up. Yeah, Grav invested Shatter as well. Doesn't really get them much. EMP and the Death Blossom online now at the same exact time for Bazzi and Adora. So, Hangzhou Spark definitely have staying power, or stopping power rather, I should say, for this card. Just need Look to get the set up. He's yeah, in a really above nice spot. Them. They're pushing up onto that high ground. He's going to get spotted out, forced back with the translocator. He'll lob that Neptuno. one over to the side. Neptuno has sound barrier. He's at the back. He's in a very safe spot. Well, EMP comes through, manages to catch two. The sound barrier from Neptuno going to be good. Shatter dropped in this time for Gushui. Looking good, but he gets melted down. IDK manages to find the kill. The Guangzhou Church still trying to win out. IDK, however, trying to drag this back into their favor. It's two. They're two kills here in the fight. But it's still just the Guangzhou charge persevering at Krong the end of it all. Both support ultimates and a Death Blossom online, however. Krong is crushing it in the Zarya matchup, though. Oh, yeah. His grab was much better. He's already got another one ready here, essentially. The choke is locked up. This is pretty much all she wrote. Well, EMP through Adora and Gushui both hacked. Gushui taken down instantly, but Bebe manages to find Shu with the coalescence. Death Blossom goes through from Adora. Good Blossom. Find some kills. It's a bit of damage in, but doesn't net himself anything in the yeah. kill feed. He doesn't get anything but in the kill feed, but that extra damage. Stopped. Yeah, exactly. The extra damage as you're alluding to is was really quite significant and helps shut it down. Krong had high energy and he looked like he might try to go for a grab, but as everyone fell around him, he decided to stop that. But an over aggressive Bazzi getting picked here means Guangzhou has a really nice opportunity to set up for that fight now with the Graviton Surge. IDK had to use the sound barrier in the previous fight. So 70 seconds here to go as they push through once again. Shoot with the coalescence to grab to stack them all up. Krong, let's get some all. Nice and neatly packaged for everybody else on the Guangzhou charge to go ahead and unwrap them. They do so, the team wipe right at the end. They'll push with just shy of a minute remaining. 57 seconds here for the Guangzhou charge. End up with the you know, safer grab fight, right? I mean, Krong had an opportunity to, at uh, higher energy, go for the grab in the last fight, but decided against it. And they regroup. He takes a pretty low energy grab, but obviously builds up in the fight. And like you said, wrapping, unwrapping the presence. So now Guangzhou, a solid defense will net them a lead here. But with how this series has gone so far, I get the feeling Hangzhou is going to finish the map. We're going to see some of the similar uh, choke holds, right? This archway you see right here, which is historically one of the tougher places to break through on Rialto. There's the A archway where, uh, you know, Guangzhou charge, if they can have a better defense, they might be able to get that grab we were talking about at the archway right at A. And then there's ways for Guangzhou to actually just seal the deal here and take this map. But, you know, I, I'm not expecting that. I'm expecting to see a much tighter start here for Hangzhou Spark. Zgushui just reminds everyone that he's a great Winston player, but we'll absolutely be swapping over to Reinhardt, no doubt. And hopefully we'll see more of the good shatters from him and not the ones that get blocked <laughs> this time. Yeah. I'll see if he can uh, d deliver on that uh, that want, but right now Bazzi starting off with the Widow looking for a stray shot, but don't think he's going to be able to find uh, too much of anything, so yeah, we'll just go ahead, be the swap out, straight over on to the Sombra. Safe translocator to the back, not going to try to do anything aggressive, not going to try to fight for high ground. Good instant 180 to try to get the hack there onto Eileen. Doesn't get it, but at least shows a very nice response time. Much more aggressive defense here for the Guangzhou Charge, playing up at the actual cart spawn effectively on the first bridge. Yeah, playing around the bridge, playing around IDK's Lucio. High ground control here for Bazzi now on the backside. Oh, side. Rio. He doesn't know which way to look. They had him completely surrounded like a pack of wolves. 
And they go ahead and they just rip him to shreds. Get really that kill, and this is a major opening, yeah, for the Hangzhou Spark. As soon as the speed boost came through and they decided Rio was the target, that's when Bazzi translocates onto the high ground. You see the push forward from Adora, who does a massive amount of damage there, and everything falls apart. Guangzhou will not have grab, but they will get the archway fight that Hangzhou did not in the previous attack. So, you know, there's an opportunity here for them. They're going to actually try to wrap around the backside, though. I don't know about this one. Well, now are directly above the cart, and this will be the drop down. Bazzi tries to go for that. EMP manages to catch five. Neptuno instantly killed off by the coalescence here from Bebe. Rio, however, still going to be all right. Shu going to be fading out of the Graviton Surge. Tries to keep Eileen alive, but the healing is just not enough, even with a bubble tossed in from Krong. So we'll just be the cleanup as Adora gets a triple kill on the back end of the fight. And Nero goes off into the canal. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, you know, as anybody, I didn't like the high ground uh, attempt there, the wrap around. They kind of jumped right into the EMP and then tried to fight over it afterwards. Oh, hello. Lost that's fight. Yeah, not where you want to be. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Guangzhou kind of used some tools they didn't need to and didn't really gain anything out of that, minus a small stall. So Hangzhou's really happy with the timing and the pace they're working with right now. Well, drop down straight onto the cart. The Graviton Surge is there, but the Death Blossom is out with the sound barrier from IDK. Shatter will kill off Krong. And I, this is just... Guangzhou Charge effectively, like, lemmings over the cliff. Yeah, I mean, they didn't have... Jumping to their demise. They didn't have a great fight they could look for there, as Eileen had used his EMP in the last fight. But Krong using Grav there, and... I mean, a lot of... I feel like miscommunication on how ults are going to be used. They're just trying to slow down this pace, but they're not winning much in the long term this way. They do manage to gain a little bit of space. Five ultimates nearly online as well for the charge. Guangzhou There's respecting the sound barrier. Yeah. Spark significantly further away from their ultimates. Just the coalescence going to be rolling for now. Death Blossom is out from Nero. Manages to find Bebe. And Guchwei will fall as well. So a good hold. You can finally try and chew up some of this time bank. Three minutes remaining, however, is still quite good for the Spark, given just how very close they are to point B. Yeah, it feels like Guangzhou, and this is kind of a trend for this series and the last, it feels like they're not playing for a win on this map. They're just trying to play for eliminating time bank. They take this fight, right, with the sound barrier advantage, but now Bowsy has EMP advantage, and the pendulum swings back, so they're going to have to be aggressive with Eileen's EMP uh, and, and be aggressive with it and hit it first. If they try to EMP second, they're going to have a big problem. Interesting to see how they play this. Nero on the high ground, wrapping around. Oh. Eileen looking like he maybe wanted to go for it there. Translocates will go ahead. Drops in the EMP, catches Bazzi, and instantly Nero's in the back line with him. Graviton Surge comes out from Sashin. He will get rid of Krong. Now Ryo gonna fall. Nero taken out as well. So it's gonna be a three for two in favor of the Hangzhou Spark. Cart's still gonna be contested here briefly, but Neptuno is not gonna be able to stick around. He tries to escape, cannot do so. Shu just trying to buy up just a little bit of time, a couple extra seconds, and get that reset. Three That's... minutes, 20 remaining for the Hangzhou Spark, and look at the ultimates that they have stacked yeah. up. Yeah, like, that's that's the risk you take when you take a fight at the angle that Guangzhou did, where you go for that e aggressive EMP, is find yourself in a really bad position, and Guangzhou would take that fight with a really risky but smart grab from Sashin. Oh no, this could be big. <laughs> yeah, Death Blossom gonna be going through, but Actually does manage to get Krong. Didn't think he was going to be able to do that because it seemed like he was left to his own devices. Smack from around the corner, a little bit of a jump scare for Adora there at the end, but Rio does get taken out as well by that it, damage orb from Bebe. It takes out Krong after he grabs too, so another tool lost here yeah. to really slow this down and, and play for the win instead of the time bank depletion. I, there are still four ultimates online for the spark right now, Bazzi. Sitting in the corner, hiding. As Rio pushes forward, shatters online for him. He's getting hosed down. Bubble comes up to try to keep him alive, and the barrier keeps going lower and lower. EMP in with the stun. The shatter there from Gushue takes him to the ground, and they finish him off. 
Cart just point twenty six meters away. EMP out, however, from Eileen. Can they turn it around? Looks in, looking like it's going to be a no, however, because IDK yet again has a perfectly timed sound barrier. Keeps his teammates safe, and as six, they glide to victory here. 2.09 to a minute now as we get ready to go into OT rounds. Yeah, it looks like Krong, you know, in that last moment there, tried to have a similar heroic graviton surge in a fight that was obviously off the rails for Guangzhou Charge. Really ends up hurting them because it could have delayed so well. You're obviously going to have a much better time fighting over C, where you have the fast spawn, where you have that choke control, than you are going to be kind of halfway in your own archway and outside of the archway where Krong decided to use that grab. If they had won the fight, he would have looked like a hero, right? But he looks the fool because it fails. He doesn't have it for that super strong C contest where they could have swapped to. Tons of different heroes to delay. Obviously, Wrecking Ball being disabled this week means that's one of the ones they wouldn't have had, but they could have bought a lot more time. And the fight before that, where they went for the aggressive EMP, again, I feel like a correct decision, a smart one, but Hangzhou knew exactly that it was going to happen, knew how to fight around that position, forcing the EMP to be on the edge. IEK gets that environmental kill. And even though these teams are so evenly matched, and mechanically, they're, I feel like they're stronger and weak points on both sides, and yeah. I feel like Hangzhou's playing smarter overall, and that's where you see that extra minute, nine second time bank advantage. Five, four, three, well, it ain't over till it's over. We've got at least three more minutes of gameplay here. Eileen going on that scouting mission. Spark is going to be set up on that top left high ground. Bringing the cart across the bridge so far. Rio, and you got to be careful when you're in this position because you know that IDK is on the enemy team. And the guy can't just come flying out of nowhere. They see him right now on that high ground. Jumps back. This place is Nero, and he instantly gets scooped by Bazzi. Great hack there. Yeah, fantastic coordination, fantastic shot calling coming through. Everybody just responding to the targets. And they see IDK, and everybody's like, I don't know, we got to back up off the bridge now. Yeah, you have 15 to 15 seconds him. remaining, though. He's just constantly back and forth across these three little ledges. Shu needs that coalescence so badly. Yep, Bebe's got his shoe, falls down low, pops his own coalescence, so has the second defensive ultimate. Shatter out from Gushue, manages to catch Eileen, and they will be able to kill him. Sasha finding that, getting it towards that grab. Krong just a little bit further ahead, but they need that all online right now. They also need for Rio to land a pretty fat shatter. His barrier going lower and lower, drops it in on top of the grab, so they will be able to get rid of Sasha. The fire strike goes in, gets Gushue. IDK finally gets that boop that he was fishing for for so very long, but it's only Shu, and everybody else is gone. The extended team wipe onto the spark opens up a lot of space for the Guangzhou charge, but given how far back the cart was starting, they will not be able to get that free push onto point A. There's yeah. still a recontest here for Spark. They've got a grab, they've got an EMP, and nearly a Death Blossom. Okay, IDK has the barrier that he needs. They get the hack on this Omega that's actually huge. Huge for the Spark, and they can fight in this choke. Here comes Eileen, he wants first. Push around the corner. Green manages to catch for the sound barrier from IDK, gonna be good. Bazzi, however, Taken out as he uses his own EMP. Neptuno tries to keep them alive, but Adora, he jumps straight on top of their heads. Manages to find two with the Death Blossom. Gushue killing off another. That is going to be the wipe just in front of point A is as good as it gets for the Guangzhou charge. Hangzhou now have two minutes and nine seconds to just barely beat that and move up 2-1 in the series. Yeah, and this is, I feel like uh, Hangzhou Spark, their A is their strongest point, so... In a lot of ways, it, it kind of favors them that Guangzhou kind of only gets to fight over A because they've got a really strong Lucio player. Their control of choke points is really, really, I, I want to say smart, uh, I, I think is the best way to describe it. Gushue getting that shatter on the bridge that hits Eileen only when he's at 99% of an EMP. That's intelligence, that's knowing your win conditions, that's fighting the right battles. And even though, yes, they did eventually overextend and get caught there, they had enough time, they knew they had enough time to regroup and go back towards that A defense. It's not over until it's over, as you mentioned earlier, but uh, I really like how Hangzhou played a lot of that bridge defense. And Guangzhou is going to have to have a really similar amount of success here if they want to have hopes of taking this map. 
Because once, if you fail on the bridge early, and then you give EMP charge and uh, fast grab to Sashin for Hangzhou as they roll around the corner, they're going to take that fight on A really easily. So you cannot mess up this first defense. You kind of have to keep that edge. You have to keep building your own snowball-y defense, if that makes sense, in terms of ult economy. Well, moving their way forward. Shots just going to be coming through. Eileen not playing any kind of flank angle, just sitting right here into the front. Bubble used on IDK so he can try and displace them. Will lead to the charge, dropping here onto the low ground. Looking for a target. Rio unable to get any kind of hits, and the fire strike's not really landing. Finally gets a little bit of extra alt charge. Try and catch up to Gushui. Back onto IDK, but Eileen act in response. But Eileen is just very much surging past Bazzi at the moment. 73 to 46% for the EMBs. That could be a big game changer for them. Neptuno gets a boop off. Fire strike in, Gushui down. That is going to be the reset. Coalesce. Coalescence is burned here, but Shu can build one up rather rapidly. Yeah, and just like. Hangzhou did. Guangzhou takes the same style of defense. They know that the Neptuno threat that they can use is great. Eileen is being the proactive Sombra, so as you mentioned, he has the much faster EMP, and he can hit this before IDK has a chance to sound barrier if he's aggressive enough. They also have to know though, if they if they do it too early in this fight, then Hangzhou could just come back and win it right afterwards with their own EMP and push to A. So very scary timings here for Guangzhou. You want to try I mean, to force them to trade and win that fight. IDK just getting a boot back there. Create some distance between Nero and the rest of his squad. Coalescence is used as the Guangzhou charge just retreats. Shu nearly taken down. He'll get burst healed back up. Nero almost hacked, goes into the Wraith form to try and retreat. EMP, Shatter, Sound Barrier, and the Grav online for the Spark now. Eileen tosses out the translocator. Doesn't chase it forward. This could be anybody's fight. Grabs coming out from both sides. The EMP up over the top. Bazzi gonna be hacked out. Sound barrier comes down and Nero, he's got the Death Blossom, manages the find two. Bazzi uses his EMP in response, but it is far too late. The damage is done. Guangzhou charge. They maintain the hold. The full hold here in overtime rounds. And they will be able to move up to one. Mind-blowingly great defense from Guangzhou. Insanely smart. I was talking about how Hangzhou was playing smarter throughout that entire Rialto. Talk about the fake we saw. Eileen's fake EMP throws a translator in, does not commit, decides to slow Hangzhou repeatedly. They had all the ult advantages. They could have tried to EMP and then lose the next fight, then try to fight for A the same way Hangzhou did. They faked a lot of fights. They faked a lot of aggression. They backed off. They pulled back. Nero plays super smart with his attempted Death Blossoms, it looks like, which makes Hangzhou be like, oh, okay, we got to get ready to set up for this Death Blossom. Then we'll fight right afterwards. Or, oh, watch out for this EMP. And the clock went from two minutes to 15 seconds, and they yep. knew they only needed the one EMP fight, not the early fight to get a second EMP for A. They waited till the win condition. They waited for that one fight territory, as, as some of our casters like to call it. Hit the EMP with a Death Blossom. They were so patient. That was really, really impressive from Guangzhou Charge. Significantly less time bank, but very well executed defense. Yeah, and now the onus is on the Spark to try and even us up yet again. Otherwise, Guangzhou Charge going to be able to get another victory over this squad. They are at match point. We'll see what happens when we come back for what could be our final map in just a bit. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Rank up with America's first and only nationwide 5G network.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We might have one more map here in this series, perhaps, if the Guangzhou Charge can clear it out. Sounds like Wolf just got back on comms as well. Welcome back, Wolf. We're just I'm back. Uh, in the, the re-intro right now, welcoming everyone back from the stream out of the break. It's fine. I had to run to the restroom real quick. I had no, to... It's, I had it, to I had to pull an Achilles there. I had to. I had to. I think hey it's the first time I've not hey been man. on camera when we seconds. came back. You gotta it's wash those hands. You. Twenty seconds. It's it's worth it's worth it to be late than you know to be <laughs> exactly. safe. But uh, yeah, I mean this this really is such a great series. And uh, if we just go to game five, I'm gonna I'm gonna be such a, a happy camper. Um, you know, one more chance here for the Hangzhou Spark to try and even this up, make it a two-two, and then force us on to another control round. They were able to take that map, our first round of control and Oasis, so perhaps that would bode very well for them, but first they have to try and get through the charge one more time, you know, not one more time, but this time here as we get ready to go on to Eichenwald. Yeah, I mean, I think the real edge that we saw from Guangzhou uh, in that last map was their ability to control that last uh, you know, two-minute push that Hangzhou had, how they stalled, how they faked out uh, team fights. Um, and, you know, Hangzhou responded really well, too. They didn't drop EMP or didn't drop a sound barrier or anything like that. They didn't get totally um, tripped up by the fake outs, but it bought them enough time. And because these two teams are so close, having those intelligent decisions when you're in an overtime scenario, like what we saw in Volskaya as well, for example, that's what's going to push you that, you know, 10% ahead of your opponent that's going to get you those wins when you're actually... Um, you know, this evenly matched, which we've seen so many times. I mean, I could foresee another world here where we have both of these teams finish Eichenball just with how this is going. Well, we shall see as things unfold. Looks like Nero just going to be going for just that initial little pot shot with the Widowmaker as Bassy positions himself quite far forward. See if there's going to be any final alterations. Krong looking for a random hook onto an unsuspecting Bazzy. Pop up over the top, and Nero not going to be able to take the shot. Doesn't want to give any ult or any uh, energy over to Sasha. Might have been a couple of people confused as to why he aimed above the Zarya's head. Knows that A, they will not get on top of the Zari in time to get a kill off of that damage if the shot lands, but more than likely might have the bubble come up from the Zarya and then suddenly, boom, that extra energy is there and Sashin starts ripping people apart on the approach. So smart little uh, shot away. You see the same thing with Reinhardt's and Fire Strikes from time to time if you want to try to bait out that bubble. They toss it. Zarya's will pop the bubble on the animation of the Fire Strike, but you actually just throw it to the side into a wall where they cannot possibly get hit by it. Adora nearly beamed down as you can see Krong, speaking of energy on Azaria, is absolutely stacked with it. So it starts melting people down. One tick, nearly two on the board here for the Guangzhou Charge. Coalescence is going to be coming out from both sides. A hack there on Asasha, but he still manages to find a kill onto Nero, getting rid of that Reaper and further delaying that Death Blossom. Sasha picks up a second one as Krong will fall the pin. From Gushui is good, and Sasha is just on fire right now. 16% ahead of Krong as far as that Graviton Surge charge is concerned. And IDK nearly with a sound barrier as well. So that steady stream of healing coming out from him doing wonders for the spark. As he, however, Eileen. picked off a little bit too deep in there. Yeah, Eileen has this EMP, but IDK is ready as long as he doesn't get caught. Moves forward, but only manages to find two. The sound barrier is going to be good from IDK. Grab is out. Krong still 20% off of his. A shatter from Gushui. Absolutely huge. And the cleanup will be there. Shutting them down. So 77.6% built up here for the charge on point A with still two minutes to go. But Spark looking really clean in these teamfight executions. Yeah, really nicely done. I mean, two ticks is pretty significant when you're about to charge in with your own Graviton Surge. You know that you forced out the sound barrier. Eileen just getting some information here. But yeah, this is a great boon for Spark in terms of the uh, ability to shut down that time bank. Bazzi can counter all of this with a really good EMP, but Neptuno obviously has the response. So it's on Bazzi to really make a big play here in terms of how much value he gets and how aggressive he can be. And he's already had to translocate, so kind of limited here into what he can do to initiate. 
We got Nero on the high ground up behind them as well. The sound barrier is going to be good enough to him. Not going to get caught up in the EMP. Rio, however, falling lower and lower, but the Coalescence will come through from Shu to help keep him alive. Now the grab. Tossed in. Death Blossom comes out from Adora, and they shut them down again. The front line broken down. Nero does manage to find one, but the Fire Strike will get rid of Neptuno. And now it's just Shu alone with Eileen, and they're not going to be able to get anything done. They get so damn close to closing out this point. Yeah, 0.5% away from just getting that, getting that extra two and a half minutes in the time bank, but to no avail. They cannot make it happen. Yeah. Gushway Here's waiting. Gushway is setting this up oh. from behind. Beautiful. Massive shatter there, comes in, gets the triple, and that's the, kind of the last nail in the coffin there. Right now, Hangzhou's spark, I mean, that was expensive, but they've already built up Sashin's grab. Yep, EMP does come through, manages to hack out four, and Gushui will fall. Rio dumps in with that shatter. They're off the point, and that will be the cap now, just under three minutes here for the Guangzhou charge, but a really nice time by for the Hangzhou Spark, and now they've got a plethora of ultimates to utilize yeah. in, you know, retaking this cart, especially if they can catch it now, right here at the Portacolos, then that is so huge for them. Yeah, they can definitely try to look for a choke point fight here. Great shatter, by the way, by Rio to make sure that Sashin stayed down, even though the sound barrier kept him alive. He wasn't able to get up and use his grab. He was so high energy. Great shatter by Rio. They're not going to look for the jump down onto the choke just yet. They're actually going to look for a corner fight, it looks like here. Bazzi doesn't have EMP. They want a bigger combo. Hack does connect onto IDK. Eileen going to be hacked, however. Grab comes through. Coalescence as well. Just so much damage pushing forward. I mean, several ultimates used there by the Spark, but look what, the, what they have coming up now. They've got the EMP Death Blossom combo, so that could still certainly net them a, another long hold on yeah. this cart. And they have the high ground to utilize as well in all of that, which is extremely helpful in setting these things up. Because you don't know whether Eileen's going to jump down from above, he's going to flank from the side, he could be behind you. You don't have a D.Va to spy check, so you don't have a lot of really awareness. I mean, you can see Nero's kind of trying for it here. See if he's up there, checking around over here. Also keeping himself pretty well hidden, thus finally gets scouted there. But there's, so you see how slow Guangzhou has to move to play around Bazzi's EMP because they just don't know where he is. Well, Guangzhou Speaking finally, up. yeah, catching up for, with their own alts. EMP ready. He's tracking. the window before Neptune they, has sound they have, Yeah, they have to know that Neptuno is going to be close to that one, so the EMP is going to be coming out a solo alt onto Rio. But it does force you to use the Coalescence. We'll see if they continue to re-aggress or if they want to wait for the Reinhardt. Damage Orb going to be thrown in. Nero trying to gain high ground control. Eileen here to support him as well. Looks like he wanted to, to wait that for IDK. Off. Yeah, he wanted to wait for IDK to come up to try to get the hack. It does not happen. IDK is one step ahead. He was constantly just trying to boop him back. So can't force him off the high ground, but is still just keeping tabs on that Reaper. Grab coming out the door, uses that Death Blossom, manages to find Neptuno, will get a second one for his troubles. Pin not going to connect to Dora, manages to find him. Actually, gets Bebe knocked off the side of the map, so, uh, you know, it wasn't fruitless, but it, it was wasn't still fruitless, but, I mean, you got a lot of, you've got a lot of worries about how you're going to win this next fight, though, with Eileen having to probably touch, and he's the one who needs to EMP here. It looks like they might actually be able to buy some time. As you can yeah, see, Neptuno coming over. They can certainly get in range in time to get the tag. EMP going to be used, manages to catch three, but again, IDK not going to get caught. Sound barrier is going to be good. Shatter from Rio managed to catch both tanks, and Nero is there to scoop up the kills. Takes down Gushue and Sasha. Fire Strike not going to find it much, but now Death Blossom is online. Hangzhou Spark, if they can disengage, they can catch this cart before it arrives at the gateway. Just now crossing tough, the bridge, though. but this, yeah, it's definitely going to be tough, but they can I don't know if go it's for it if they it. want. Bazzi's going to try for it. Oh, they know that he's there, and they will go ahead and push out. Block on that hack, Gushway. Trying to stay safe. Shatter going to be dropped in, but it's greeted by the shield. It's greeted by Azaria Bubble, and Nero has the Death Blossom as well. Just get himself a quad. Now looking for a little bit more chasing forward. They only used the uh, the Earth Shatter there, so it's not the worst possible scenario for Hangzhou Spark, but I think contesting there was definitely not the right move. You give Guangzhou a free push here, they don't really have to utilize much. 
and you know give them even a little bit more ult charge. Now they get all the way around this corner. You know, just letting them take it and then trying to fight the choke might have been the better play for Hangzhou, but they got greedy. Yeah. They didn't have the EMP. Bazzi will have it now. They have that. They have the grab. Coalescence as well. 54 seconds remaining. Final corner. Five-man hack on the EMP shoot. Trying to keep people alive. Can't keep Rio up, but so far is keeping everybody else in the fight. Nero manages to answer one back as Gucci will fall. Solo kill coming out from the Reaper. Now Sasha going to be hacked. Has to peel back around the corner, but the cart is unable to advance right now. Rio. EMP. Yeah, Rio re-arriving. Yeah, this actually could allow them to finish the map if Hangzhou doesn't respond well. They have to play super safe and defensively wait for this second grab. I think Sasha has to grab second. Grab is out. Death Blossom looking good, though. Adora is keeping them zoned back while they're caught up in that Graviton Surge. Shatter going to be dropped in. Doesn't find anything. And it looks like that might just be the end of it here with six seconds remaining. And seemingly no one able to get onto the card. The bubble will come through as Eileen has to take a short hop. EMP comes through, manages to catch five. But it would take some serious heroics from Neptuno to turn that one around. But instead, it's IDK greeting him and shutting him down. So pretty close here to getting to the throne, to getting to that point C. But they can't finish the map, so there is a definite win condition now for Hangzhou Spark. If they can get a solid push, they will be able to take us to that game five. Yeah, and it's, I think, the first time in the series we didn't have a map completion for one of these teams. So finally shut down, <coughs> excuse me, shut down in the last <laughs> moments. Uh, there, the real heroic moment was Adora actually being very um, proactive, you know, being the initiator in that last fight. And his set up there. We knew Sasha was going to grab second, but he actually went in first. He saw an opening. He took a risk. And that meant that Guangzhou were two down, and they couldn't EMP in that fight. Krong, meanwhile, used his grab. And Eileen's like, ah, I could EMP this, but I'm just not certain that that's the right move I want to follow up for the next fight. But they ended up losing too many members, and there was some lack of commitment there from Guangzhou charge that allowed Hangzhou Spark to even arguably very much so down in ultimates. They made the right choice there. Adora, perhaps an individual choice there, just not even without even planning it, just found that one opening, weaved his way in, and then the fight goes their way. But still, a very long push for Guangzhou, all things considered, given how rough of a start they had. We'll see how well they can defend. I, we saw how well they were able to defend on Rialto just before this, and it was uh, extremely clean for them, at least in the overtime round. So we'll see if they fared just as well this time from the offset. The outset, rather. Yep. Rio just kind of hugging this corner here. It's going to be mirror comps. They knew it from the outset. They knew that uh, that was going to be the start that they were facing, but now they've got it confirmed. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised at the, the lack of uh, diversity that we're seeing in these, yeah. these compositions with these teams, but it seems like the... Sombra Reaper is definitely just very favored at the moment. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's kind of, we've, in a weird way, gone back to Sombra Goats, essentially. Well, all of that could change, because reminder, guys, at the end of all of this, we will be doing the hero pool draw. Perhaps right after this map. It's extremely possible if Guangzhou can close it out, but that is a very bad start for them as Nero will get taken down. Shu and Baby Bebe both, both rolling with those coalescences, but it is going to be Hangzhou Spark pushing forward and the charge crumble under the pressure. Oh, Bazzi's going to have an EMP here as well, so it's not like the advantages that Guangzhou will have on high ground and, uh, you know, with their own grab lead is actually necessarily going to matter. It's going to be a pretty even fight here, which is actually huge for Hangzhou because normally you take A, then you have to fight up under the castle and, and you know, sometimes you're down in ultimates as well because you had to use somebody to take A, but because they got it basically with only Gushui wasting a shatter there. They have a really nice fight they can take defensively when Guangzhou jumped down. Oh, well, here they come. EMP out. Catches four. Bazzi the first one to fall, but no other kills coming through quite yet. Krong trying to hunt for one, but isn't high energy on this Zarya. This will definitely give him an opportunity to build up a little bit more. You can see him taking a couple of those right clicks from Sashin. 
that does it's, allow him to build up slightly. It's so greedy what Eileen did. You don't expect the Sombra to come from that angle. You expect it to come from this door you can see on the right or from a, a different angle, but you never expect them to be behind you. He was probably way, way far back, so they didn't spy check him. Huge EMP there. Yeah, now they go for the grab. It catches Gushui by himself, and the responding grab from Sashin is just so much bigger. That Guangzhou charge is getting a little bit too trigger happy with these ultimates. And that is quite costly. So now going to be moving up to the bridge. Obviously, plenty of time to recontest the cart, but getting out yeah. of the castle is going to prove to be very difficult for the charge. Krong? And there's still 3 minutes 40 seconds for the spark. If Krong gets a really good sound barrier here and builds up high energy, and then the longer fight Eileen gets an EMP, this is winnable for sure. But Hangzhou know this, and they're just going to play around this, the front here. They're not going to actually allow Guangzhou to set up. Adora goes in with the Wraith form. They get that sound barrier out. It goes in for the Death Blossom, but Krong just melts him. IDK sliding around the side, tries to get that knockoff. Doesn't manage to find it, however. Oh, that Ryan reduced knockback coming uh, quite in handy here for Rio. And now it's going to be a little bit of a stalemate, a poke war across the bridge. And Gushway here. Just going to wait for the rest of his team to get back for the setup here. Eileen, once again, unscouted, unseen. IDK is right in front of him, and he will get caught. Not that he had the ultimate ready to go either way, but still decent tracking to ensure that they get that loose you know, Make sure that there's no Eileen? movement speed there for them to try to pull back. Eileen is just not, I mean, you cannot allow a Sombra to get away with this blatant backdooring, basically, of your team. He's now had two great EMPs where just hangs way back. Starts to make you feel comfortable. Okay, I guess Eileen's not here. We've swung enough hammers. We, you know, le press left click on Zarya. Everyone spam backwards. You don't have great spy check heroes as Hangzhou here, but but enough. And then Eileen just keeps hitting these point blank EMPs, these six mans from the flanks. They've got a spot for that somehow. It's hard. You know, it's easier said than done, but you've got to be more aware of those potential situations, or you're just going to give great EMP fights repeatedly. Yeah, I mean, I mean, definitely not committing hard enough to try and search for him. Getting it a little bit too lackadaisical with that one. Hat comes through on the Neptuno. He does manage to wall right back to safety just before that. But as I say so, Bebe will go ahead and finish him off with that coalescence. Minute and a half now remaining for the Spark Shatter. Dropped in, finds Nero, and Sashin is there to go ahead and scoop the kill. Cleanup will come through, fade out from Shu just to buy a little bit of extra time, but it's instantly picked off. So Cart rolls in to B. Two minutes, 50 seconds now on the clock, and they don't even have to finish the map. Guangzhou charge, they need to they need to bunker down they, very they need quickly. To, they need to deal with this Sashin grab really well, too, because Sashin could just grab them off of the cart with how this is rolling around the corner right now. And they don't have great answers. I mean, the EMP is almost ready. But that's not something that Hangzhou is worried about. IDK has his own sound barrier ready. They can grab afterwards. It's a great fight for them. Based on this right now, grab coming through. EMP going to be dumped. The only catches two. The sound barrier is going to be good. Nero is dead. And like you said, off the cart, Hangzhou Spark are able to take the victory here on Eichenwald. And you know what that means? Well, the prophecy is being fulfilled. Game five. And it just keeps happening. Yep. Excited to see it. Uh, I, I've, I've created the story. I only played against each other once this season before this, but I've kind of like I, I, I you know, drew some lines across and, and made this fake story on it. Like, there's a sick rivalry between these two teams. The shows, the game fives. Uh, I mean, it's, it's the shows. It, I am. It's coming. It's it's a new thing. They're gonna play against each other a lot this season. So yeah, uh, maybe we'll keep getting these game fives. Well, we uh, uh, but, wow. we have it coming up now. Yeah, I, down to the wire. Both these teams back and forth. Hangzhou able to get control the first time out. Can Guangzhou do it this time? And can they get those back-to-back -back victories over the Spark? We're going to find out in just a little bit. So stay tuned, guys. You don't want to miss the end of this amazing series. It's coming at you in just a minute. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
And here we go. Not too long a wait to get back into a very long series. Game five coming up now between the Guangzhou Charge and the Hangzhou Spark. Uh, I mean, this one has been so very close from the very beginning. Uh, but here we are, game five territory, and it is absolutely anybody's for the taking. It has been a very nail-biter uh, of a series. I feel like in a weird way, though, because both teams have gotten almost all the completions. We saw that start to change, obviously, as we got towards the latter parts of the map. But at the beginning, it felt like, wow, it's 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 almost exhausting how bad these two teams are at defending and how strong they are at attacking. But it's starting to change a little bit, um, it feels like. And both teams have utilized their strengths really well. Hangzhou obviously playing around, I think, a lot of their great ability to do ult combos, and it's Somber Goats-esque, again, I keep saying, but it's the most similar comp uh, to what we're seeing right now that we've seen in the past. They're playing very well around ult combos, whereas Guangzhou's playing well around mind games, around individual plays, um, around good flanks and stuff like that. So when we go to control, though, uh, I mean, it's all about, especially in this, this style of play that we're seeing, the first EMP, getting that lead, getting the grab sure. lead, and, I mean, first come, first serve, is basically what it feels like <laughs> what might decide this series at the end of it, despite a lot of complex mind games and really, really close maps. Well, we will be jumping into that in just a little bit here. And, you know, seeing who is going to be able to take this set. Again, this is, you know, back-to-back -back, uh, potential revenge for all of the teams that we have here today. Charge able to take down Spark a week ago. We just saw Shanghai uh, get there. Revenge as well over the Hunters. So can we get double vengeance or will it just be a little bit half-baked for the side of the Spark? That is the question here. They fought it back to this fifth game. And it is Nepal. Uh, I think we mentioned that earlier on the map, so we may not have, but that's where we're headed for what will actually be the tiebreaker here. No other control maps will be required. Yep. Because uh, we didn't have any draws on our way here. It's just a legit five map series. Ready and I don't think we'll see compositional changes between these two teams just based on how they've played so far. When we go to Sanctum, I think that's the only place where you could really see a uh, potential change. You might see something like an Orisa. But the lack of a McCree, the lack of really good range damage and how these two teams are playing right now, is I just don't think it's going to happen. We're going to see the teleports out with the... Uh, Symmetra is coming through, and it's going to be a fight over the village, the control point itself. I mean, whoever wins that gets such a massive advantage. It's going to get crazy. <laughs> oh, well, or it's going to get paused. Okay, looks like uh, Bazzy might be having a little bit of issues getting into the lobby, or at least in selecting a hero. Yeah, I don't know how this is all going to shake out. If he actually got dropped... I mean, it's at the very beginning of the round. Yeah, uh, I'd say there's so. almost a case for a restart if he gets dropped, given that there. <laughs> no one. I mean, I mean, it's a mirror matchup. It's teleports. <laughs> nothing's happened except I'll leave that to his ult charge. I'll leave that to League Ops to figure that to figure that one out. They can they can crack that egg for us. But uh, yeah, it seems like just a, a little bit of a hiccup. So we'll just get that taken care of, so we can jump back in and finally decide the victor of this series. That has been decently elongated here for us. So, we'll just keep, uh, I, oh, I can't even say burning the, the midnight oil. Midnight is, is so far in the past at this point. Yeah. Uh, especially for me. Actually, yeah, for you it's like watching the sunrise. I can't even see what time it is right now. <laughs> I'm just going to step off camera for a second and check it's it. 7.20 for you. Yeah, seven. Yeah, 7.20 <laughs> in the morning. But we uh, guys, while restart, we get this, by the way. Yeah. yeah, while we get this uh, figured out, we're gonna go to a quick little break. We'll be back with this final map in just a bit. So stay tuned, guys.
All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, just a little bit of an issue with the lobby, but seems like we have yep. things squared away. So we can jump on back in to Nepal and see how things shake up. I, I mean, this is like the ideal time that this could have happened. It's right at the yeah, beginning sure. of the round. Nothing has transpired, and we also know that uh, these teams have not really descended away from the composition that we've been seeing this entire time. So it's just going to be that, uh, that Reaper Sombra with the initial teleport forward from the Symmetra. Uh, to try and rush to the point a little bit faster. So, seems like this shouldn't affect anything at all. We can just go back in and enjoy our map number five. That's right. You know, this is the kind of situation where you see that and you're like, okay, I mean, no damage was done. Uh, the heroes weren't revealed, so... So we find if somebody changes up right now, it's not like, well, they changed because it was a restart. That doesn't even make sense. So, yeah, surprise, surprise. We're gonna see. We're gonna see teleports out of the gate, but this time Bazzy's gonna be in the game. It's gonna be fair, and that's that's how it goes. Yeah, the, <laughs> the only thing changing is going from uh, shrine to sanctum. That's but true, that's... actually. Yes, that is true. I didn't even you you point that out to me. I was like looking at the comps. I didn't even notice. But, I mean, either way, <laughs> it's not going to change uh, compositionally, uh, nor how these teams are really going to approach, obviously. Extremely well-versed on uh, all of these maps. They could have, these you know, changed it up for Sanctum, as we alluded to earlier, but they are not. They're nope. just going to play the same style. So, IDK, you can tell, he already wants to boost forward and try to go for a knock into that pit, but needs to play just a little bit safer. So we'll just be hovering back as the Moira's really get into the nitty gritty and start building up towards those coalescences. Nice boot back there, Krong, okay. Just goes off the side, seemingly on his own. Not gonna be attributed to uh, anybody at all. Hack goes forward onto Neptuno. And they will be able to take him down Gushway with a fire strike, finding that kill. So first lockdown of the point here on Sanctum will go the way of the Hangzhou Spark. Yeah, we might get a replay of it, I don't know, but what probably happened was he was knocked to near lethal, and then he tried to use his right click to knock himself back to where he was and didn't failed, so the game got confused. That's probably what happened. I'm not sure. Well, we might find out in a bit, as, but for now we have a fight breaking out. Shatter dropped in from Gushway, doesn't really get much, but Neptuno hacked yet again. Bassi is completely hounding him down. Now the push forward as Bennett gets popped up into the air, flying over top of the charging Reinhardt. It's it's kind of mysterious what happened to Krong there, but regardless, his early death actually really hurts them because it gives Sasha and grab control of this choke. It means that he has to start at zero energy. Heading into the second fight, Eileen somehow threads the needle again and is not seen. This just keeps happening. This could be their real entry back to the point. They're losing time every second that goes by. That is indeed how time works. Or losing control, or losing percentage. <laughs> you know, whatever you want to say it. I don't know. <laughs> it's a late night. It's all right. This is a very literal statement. EMP coming in Bazzi, striking second, but striking just a bit harder. Five members caught with that one, and Nero's like, yeah, no, screw this, I'm out. Jumps into the pit, and already 75% here for the Spark. A ton of ultimates. Yeah. Ready to go for the charge, but they need to get uh, in a no position EMP. to use these. Yeah, I mean, I think Eileen has to try to get a backline hack or something again, but without EMP, it's going to be even harder. Hangzhou can just coalesce to buy time. They're getting 99% no matter what. And how many ults charge uses to retake is the question. Yep. Moving forward, wrapping around the back, IDK. looking for the boop. Doesn't manage to find him, just pushes Neptuno a little bit further forward towards his team. Sound barrier shield, however, going to be expiring. Eileen hacked out at the moment. Will get finished off. Bazzi finds that kill. Flip does come through in the neutral fight, however, for the Guangzhou charge. Just having position there on the point. Gets them quite a lot. Shatter solo onto a door in the back. Answering Shatter there from Guchwei. Crawl falling low, and it seems like that is going to be enough. The distraction from Adora. Draws their attention away. Gushui drops the hammer. They will be able to close out the first round. 113% Guangzhou barely able to control that point. Now need to win two rounds in a row if they want to get these back-to-back -back victories over the Hangzhou Spark. Yep. This is going to be the 
shatter here, double at the same time. Yeah, and they save so, Adora as well. Yeah, and Adora, it, that's, I think, the second or third time this series he's actually countered Krong's grabs by ulting on top of them with his Death Blossom. That's another way to really deter values. Naturally, you're drawn to the grab. You see your teammate grab, you all collapse in, especially with a comp like this, and get on top of it to try to get those kills, and then suddenly you're right where a Reaper wants you to be yeah. in that enclosed space. So really nice plays by Adora. Gushwe helps set it up. And here we go once again. I mean, this could be the deciding round. Same compositions, but this is where that first cap really matters. Oh, God, so much energy built up for Sasha. 75% there, so... Maximizing as best as he possibly can. 89. Rio hack, but they're playing it safe. They're still up under that high ground. And Spark are the ones who have to now step to the charge. 100 energy here for Krong. He's looking for a target. They get a hack on the Sasha, so no self bubbles. No bubbles out for teammates here for the moment. This allows Krong to so really awesome. surge ahead. 22% up over top of Sasha at the moment. They will go ahead. Peel back, drop down, get over to the point now that it's unlocked, but they're not going to be able to take it right away. Spark do manage to move their way onto the point. The Coalescence try to keep them alive, but there's just so much damage as they are all bundled up. Cleanup will be there. The Guangzhou charge, they're going to be getting a little bit more than 13% this time around. Oh, poor baby. We just had to watch it happen. That was the saddest first person view. But, you know, the faster grab here matters so much, and they get the first cap. Sashin is at 82%. He's very close to his own grab, but getting into position to use it, getting onto this point or, or taking a fight even off the point puts him at a disadvantage. EMP coming through from Eileen. Kills are instantly there. And this is just allowing more time for Krong to try and build up. He's pushing forward to try to lob in some right clicks. Adora, going to be spotted. But uh, not finished off, but yeah, I mean, 50% to the 91 of Sasha. And so obviously, Sasha going to have that grab sooner, but Krong is getting close. He's getting and ready he's still, to lap him. He still has to get into a position to make it valuable, too. Yeah. Neptuno's got sound barrier for this EMP. As long as he doesn't get caught, he's up on the high ground. Bazzi in the back, uses that EMP, catches out two, but the sound barrier going to be good. Shatter, dropped in, catches a few. Nice pin for pin. He matches him. Now the sound barrier comes out from IDK. A lot more lasting power in the fight here for the Hangzhou Spark, but Nero trying to turn it around. He manages to do so. Two kills, one on the back of that Death Blossom, another just neutral onto Adora. They get that cleanup, and Guangzhou charge now suddenly, suddenly looking like they can take this round 100 to zero. That it's just a Death Blossom for the Spark. That's all that, they have. That was such a close fight. I mean, that was the, th the last, like, thread on a knife's edge of a close fight there. Shu with like two health left, gets his Coalescent off to help get that extra damage through and heal his team up. Very, oh. very close. They have the EMP for the choke. As you mentioned, this is going to be their last chance. Hangzhou, this needs to be big. Oh, they drop down, the Death Blossom comes through, but the hack is there and they can't make it onto the point. Oh no. One to one. A final round to decide it all. Twice in this series, Hangzhou is put into a position where they cannot they're, they're in a catch-22 catch where they either lose the fight or can't touch the point. And, you know, just barely is not able to get on there after that Death Blossom. They would have had a longer fight. Yeah, that one leads. To, but they just could not get there. And this goes the distance. I that mean, this goes down to the wire here. That one definitely leads a bit more to a C9 compared to the first one, though. <laughs> just so much... Sure, yeah, so sure. much up in sure, the air definitely. at that point. I think it's uh, perfectly fine to call that one, but man, this is uh, close to the bitter end. One of these teams is going to be, well, not going home, staying home Down and two. being upset <laughs> about the loss, I guess. Pushing forward, everybody trying to collapse yeah. on the Gushue, but the rest of the team arrives, so it's a little bit too risky now. So they will just go ahead and play the point, but this is Guangzhou charge with the inside track. Now Spark have to try to find a way to advance here. As the point does now unlock. Start working their way forward. Nero, Wraithwall gonna be down, but look at Eileen, 71% towards that EMP. Baby manages to find one as Shu gets taken out by the Coalescence. He's looking for a little bit more. Nearly gets rid of Eileen. A win of opportunity now for Bazzi to try and 
surge past him. First lockdown will be there for the spark as Rio dies on the back end of the fight. Asashin really nicely played there. His energy management, or his bubble management rather, to get his energy high was insane. That was during IDK being hacked, so couldn't give speed or healing in that fight. And he just prevented Charge from running away with that. Eileen does have the faster EMP. Obviously no sound barrier yeah, EMP yet. EMP gonna be coming through, only he manages to catch in the back. two. Bazzi and Sashin, but the fire strike from Rio is still gonna be good. Gushue taken out on that front. Graviton Surge solo onto Rio, and they still have not found the kill. EMP comes out from Bazzi, gets so many members on the side of the Guangzhou charge, but the kills just are not there. The Spark cannot collapse and try to shut them down. They're still in control of the point for the moment, but as more members continue to fall, that will change, and it does. Guangzhou charge now on the board here in this third and final round of the fifth map in this series. They continue to push deeper and deeper here. Guangzhou Charge also have so many ultimates to try and maintain control of this point. Both teams double support ults. Gushui about to match the Earth, the Earth Shatter here. But Death Blossom's already set and ready to go and Eileen is ahead of Bazzi towards that next EMP. So this is still looking very good for the Guangzhou Charge. Coalescence comes out first from Shu. Nero gonna be hacked, has that Death Blossom ready to go, but he's not gonna be able to use it as Adora goes forward with his own. Gets that kill, Eileen now going to fall. Rio taken out. Krong with a sliver of HP. Will be left up for a little bit longer. Guangzhou Charge just barely take the lead by 2%, but back into control of the Spark. Does the point go? 50% now here for them, but they had to use so many of those ultimates. Bazzi is close to an EMP, but Eileen is closer. Has his online now. They have a sound barrier. They have that Death Blossom. There's a lot more staying power for Charge. If they can do this in an ult efficient fashion, this could be absolutely massive for them. Yeah. Right now, Leptino, I mean, his sound barrier, how he uses it, actually may be the difference between life and death for them because he's going to have to, as soon as the second EMP comes through from Bazzi, shut that down. And they need this team fight win. This is their last real chance. EMP comes through, but doesn't really get much. It's just IDK. And they can't capitalize on that, so a big botch from the side of the charge so far. Nero, Wraith walking back. EMP coming through, manages to catch two. Nero's one of them, doesn't get to use that Death Blossom yet again. It's cut down instantly. Adora finds a double. Rio now going to be gone. It's 94%. The grab is out from Sashin. They clean up Krong. Shu trying to stay alive. Has to coalesce running, but Gushui takes him down. And that will be it. So very close to the very end. But Hangzhou are able to take this. They are able to get their revenge. Both teams now going to be moving to a 2-2 two and two record so far in the 2020 season. And, you know, 1-1 one and one against each other. 1-1. One and one. Game fives, I'm telling you, it's the Zhou rivalry. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's happening. Um, I'm coining it that, uh, in, unless someone already did that last season. I think we, I, I think we did that last season. Oh, well, my bad. But anyway, it feels more legitimate at least this season so far, since they played each other so recently, and both series went the distance went so close. Um, Neptuno, in that last moment, he tried to stay alive as long as he could. He was trying to counter the EMP. Did get picked off though before he could sound barrier. Yeah. Just gets outclassed there at the last second. But really smart plays um, between both of these teams. I feel like, again, Hangzhou is so good at ult efficiency, taking these fights uh, to the perfect level. I mean, as close to perfect as you can get in Overwatch, it feels like in terms of ult economy in these GOAT-style compositions, quote-unquote. Um, but then we also saw some really great moments from, from Guangzhou as well, some intelligent moments oh, and some for good sure. coordination. Yeah, I mean, every every team that played today had had some fantastic moments, also some lows, but this one was was so very close uh, the entire way through. Guangzhou Charge, I'm sure they're going to be disappointed that they couldn't get that victory, but they should still hold their heads high for putting on uh, a stellar performance, giving us a, an amazingly entertaining game. But uh, it is, in fact, the Hangzhou Spark that take it in the end. We'll go ahead and take a look at our player of the match here, and it is none other than IDK, who had uh, just pretty much steady throughout a phenomenal performance on the Lucio as we've come to expect from him. Yeah, I mean, he had some really great environmental kills, but he also threatened environmental kills on a lot of these maps, had really smart sound barriers, and it helped control high ground throughout the series. It wasn't yeah. one of those games where you look at IDK and say, wow, look at all the environmental kills, look at, you know, how he's playing, there's a, you know, Reddit thread 
it wasn't one of those <laughs> games from him, but it was more subtle from him in this yeah. series. And, you know, he, he does push ahead of players like Sashin, who had a great Zarya series despite yeah. the fact that, you know, he's up against Krong. Yeah, I mean, just the number of EMPs countered with the sound barriers coming through from IDK was was just absolutely super, superb and definitely helped them get across that finish line and get the victory here and get that revenge. But, guys, that's the series done for the day, but we are not done yet. We, of course, do have the Week 10 uh, Hero Pool draw coming up in a bit, so make sure you stay tuned. Wolf and I will be back, and we'll figure out who's not going to be seen next week in just a few minutes, so stay tuned.